We had an experience yesterday. Oh my God. <laughs> even, even my voice is, is showing it. You know, funny enough, I was remembering this morning that several years ago in this city, I lose my voice every Sunday. <laughs> and it's prayer. I will pray like there's no tomorrow. You know, and sometimes some people may see those things. I say, what is he looking for? Now I know what I'm, I, I have an idea of what I'm looking for. And I need more prayers even now that I have the idea. But I, I, did we have a time yesterday? Oh my God. Oh my God. God will do strange things in your life. It will be good strange things. It will be amazing strange things. In the name of Jesus. I, 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 I felt like that meeting was for me, man. I, I, I had a time. I, I just, I, I was coasting. Okay? And I suspect not that I suspect, I know. We will do more of it in 2025. Can somebody say amen? I, I have plans for you. <laughs> you will pray. <laughs> you will pray. You will pray, pray, pray. <laughs> but it's good to pray. The reason we pray is because we have the God that answers prayers. I know sometimes some people say, well, do you need 10 hours to call on God? Does he not know everything? He does. Do you need 10 hours to watch Netflix? Eh? Can't you read the summary and watch the trailer? Uh, is the trailer not the summary of the movie? Do you need 10 uh, and you will binge on Netflix? If you can binge on Netflix, why can't you binge on God? And the Bible says, in the presence of God is fullness of joy. If there is fullness of joy in the presence of God, in the longevity of that being in that presence, there's more fullness in that time. Okay? So the longer I'm there, the more of the fullness that I enjoy. Amen to Jesus. And let me not lie to you. There are some matters that need a long time. It is not because of God. It is because you need to ascend. You need to get to a dimension. You need to get to a place where God can touch you, so to say. Because what happens in prayer is not that we receive things. We also become. We also become. What happened yesterday? Most people thought, oh, I came to talk about my expectation for 2025. No, God made you the man for 2025. There is an Emmanuel that needs to show up in 2025. If that Emmanuel does not emerge, if there is no transformation or transfiguration, they, God will send the thing, but it will be at the wrong address. You have not arrived at that address. But I'm believing God, many of us will arrive at the address uh, even before the package arrives. Uh, because the package will not be delayed in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, let's continue our journey. I've been looking at priests and kings. And then this month, I just want to focus on the king, king, king part of it, talking about royalty. Uh, this morning, I want to talk about doing life with dignity doing life with dignity psalm 8 psalm 8 i will read the whole chapter because it's short it's one to nine many times when it comes to the book of the bible one of the ways to enjoy it is to read it at one sitting one chapter in one sitting one book in one sitting yeah read the whole of matthew in one sitting you will remember more like that and it will make more meaning to you like that so many of us just want to read one verse from devotional there's nothing wrong with that but there's a level of growth in god that it will be a disservice to you to do devotional and say you have spent time with god how many minutes will you read the devotional page you know it's a small, small. you need to dig by yourself and i'm not making any i'm not casting any shade on devotionals i'm fine next week if you come to church I'm, i want to give everybody a devotional with daddy Gio okay um so i i believe in devotionals but i i also believe that there's a level of growth that you would do devotional plus amen <laughs> psalm 8 from verse 1 <clears throat> oh lord our god how excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens verse 2 out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger do you know that the praise of god's people is a weapon 
the praise of God. Many people think we praise God when God has done something. No, we can praise God so that God will do something. Praise is a weapon. He says you have ordained praise in the mouth of your people so that through praise you can silence the mouth of the enemy. I'm speaking concerning somebody. There are some loud voices and they are talking nonsense. They have said some things concerning you. They are not in your favor. By the reason of your alignment with your royal status and you engage in praise, God will silence your mockers. God will silence your mockers. Let me tell you the truth. There are some insults you don't need to explain. You don't need results that will silence them. I ask for you again that the result that swallows insult, enjoy it now and into 2025 in Jesus' name. Verse 3. When I consider your heavens, the work of your, hair, your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him for you have made him a little lower than the angels some other translations say you have made him a little lower than yourself it's because the people some of course all the translator when they see god how can you say you made him lower than yourself no they make put angels there but really it's made him lower than yourself because we're higher than angels made him a little lower than angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor he says you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hand you have put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen even the beast of the field the birds of the air the fish of the sea that pass through the parts of the seas oh lord our god how excellent is your name in all the earth. Look at what this conversation that was going in the heavens. When there was like a spy on man. And the conversation was this. This man that you have made is a big deal. This man that you have made, you have made him with dignity, with honor. But you see, the challenge I have this morning is that the people God has made with dignity, with honor, they don't know it. The people God has put so much investment into, they don't live like the investment. They claim and blame all kinds of things. There are people that have blamed age. There are people that have blamed gender. There are people that have even blamed race. Some people have blamed who was not there. Some people have blamed who was there and said the wrong thing. But God is saying that this man that you made is lower than you. After you is him. Ah. He said, what is this man? This man is a mystery. This man is to be studied. This man is to be explored. I don't know if he baffles you or if he excites you at the things that even man has done. This morning, why am I just flipping through? I ran through a book and I was looking at some of the even theological challenges we're having with what science is doing. Because it, it almost feels like man can make man now. You know that, right? It almost feels like it's not only God that can create man. It's almost as if man too feels like they can create man. Not just robots. You know, that one is not a big deal again. Making AI and all of that kind of thing. Robots that are serious robots oh, that you think is a human being. In fact, if I go into that robot matter, you'll be surprised what's going on now. Because people have kind of robots in their house that, uh, in fact, let's leave, let's leave that part. <laughs> because they don't use it only for domestic things in terms of clean stuff. Some people are also having pleasure with robots. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But this man that you made is a big deal. Hear me and hear me very clearly. In, re in, in, in creation, God made you a king. In creation. In creation. And it is in creation that man is a king that you see some of the things you see people that don't know Jesus doing. It is the kingship that they got from creation. But you see, the kingship we got in creation was compromised by sin. So the kingship in creation is not pure enough. Now, after creation, in redemption again, God made you a king. In Revelation chapter 1, 
If you read from verse 5, the Bible says, He has made us kings and priests unto what? Our God. We are now kings again. He made us king initially. The devil cheated us. When Jesus came back, Jesus came and paid the devil and brought us back and made us kings again. So that means that if you were a king in creation, now a king in redemption, why are you not living with dignity? And I'm here this morning, I'm coming to, I am here to challenge you because I want you to look at 2025 and look at it differently. I want you to leave this service and live differently. I have seen too many of us. Many of us, we are sitting on a big deal and we are doing small deals. I have seen too many of us. We are coasting and settling with nonsense. We, 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 are, we are allowing and just being comfortable with mediocrity. And it cannot continue like that. If you were a king in creation and you are a king in redemption... Why are you not a pauper in reality? Why are you not living like it? Oh, pastor, you are just talking like that because you don't know my background. I don't need to know your background. I have seen backgrounds in this word of God. And I have seen that the background does not have to put your back to the ground. I have seen that if your mother and your father forsake you, God can pick you up. I have seen that the righteous will not be forsaken, nor his seed will beg for bread. I have seen from the word of God that seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And I know it is true. But I have also seen that many of God's people who have been made king are not living as king. In fact, do you know what redemption did to us? Redemption brought to us he brought us into the office of the firstborn. The firstborn in scripture is not just a, pos a, a place of you came first, like they gave birth to you. The firstborn in, in scripture, especially when you look at Old Testament, was a big deal. If you were the firstborn, you were the heir apparent. You were the one that took double portion. And double portion is not just they give you twice. No. The double portion is that you will first take your own portion. They will now share every other person's portion and then give you one portion out of that one everybody else's person's portion again so the place of the firstborn is a serious evil chapter 12 and 23 the bible says this is the church of the firstborn so you are a member of the church of the firstborn you are part of the firstborn and you need to understand the power of the firstborn because in genesis 49 genesis 49 i think we should read that one genesis 49 and verse 3 this is Jacob about to die and he was speaking concerning what was going to happen to all his children then he, he started with Reuben Reuben is his first point but Reuben messed up but he, look at the way this, he, he described this position which is the position that you have he said Reuben you are my first born my might and the beginning of my strength the excellency of dignity what does that mean that means if you are first born if you are in the first born church you have the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power there's there's dignity in you god crowned you he put you may not be wearing a crown we sang it today we lay our crowns i hope you believe what you were saying you have a crown it's invisible god crowned you in creation god crowned you in redemption and he's saying here that if you are now brought into that firstborn status you have the excellency of dignity you have the excellency of dignity and and i like the fact that even in the case of reuben somebody rose up for him because later on they cursed him and we were praying to some part of that prayer yesterday in, Reuben, in deuteronomy 33 verse 6 where Moses said, let Reuben live. Let Reuben live. Let there be a restoration of dignity. Can I speak like that into your life? That everywhere that your firstborn status has been compromised, let that compromise be restored and may you live in the name of Jesus. Let Reuben live and not die. Let Reuben live and not die. So God has brought you into the firstborn status. And in this firstborn status, you have dignity. What does it mean to have dignity? 
dignity is when there is value placed on a thing or a person. Value. Worth. Worth. I want to tell you if you are redeemed, you are worthy. You are not worthy to receive praise of human beings, but you are worthy. You have worth. That's what it means to be worthy. You are worthy. You are enough because he made you enough. How can you belong to the God that is more than enough and not be enough? Why are you thinking you are not enough for the job? Why are you thinking you are not enough to, to live in this country if you want to live here? You are enough. Oh, I made mistake like this. Okay, let's submit that mistake to Jesus. And he can now use it because the devil is the accuser of the brother. He's always been doing what you did last. But excuse me, sir. Once you give it to Jesus, he has brought you to the firstborn status and you have the excellency of dignity. Irrespective of what happened in the past. The devil knows how to mess up people. He tells them because this happened, that happened, then you are that thing. I'm not an event. I'm not an event. I might have been an event of rape. I might have been a, a, a victim of rape. I might have been a victim of abuse. I might have been a victim of whatever I've been a victim of. But I am not that event. The thing that happened to me is an event. When I come to Christ, when I receive the abundance of grace, uh, like the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 17, it says, they that have received the abundance of grace can reign in life, in this life, as a king. They can reign here as a king. There is an excellency of dignity. I want you to hear me and hear me twice this morning. There is an excellency of dignity. And you should look like it. You should smell like it. You should act like it. Because God has made you a big deal. He has made you a big deal. The price, P-R-I-C, dictate the worth of the product. The price you pay for anything tells you the worth of that product. Do you know the price that God paid for you? God himself was the price for you. <laughs> it was not the blood, blood of bulls, the blood of goats that redeemed you. It was the precious blood of it. It was an overpayment. It was an, over, it was an overpayment. The, the blood of bull was still taking care of sin, small, small, but it was, it was, it was temporary. The blood of God, is, the blood of Jesus is way too much. Way too much. So why are you living less than that worth? This scripture we started with, Psalm 8 says, What is man? What is man? Do, do, do you understand that? I can imagine angels wondering that Jesus will go and die. Like, uh, 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 well, uh, I, I don't understand. God will die. And then the way he will die, he will not go and die as God. He will die as man. 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 And I'm sure the angels, they will have seen man over the years. Man is very irresponsible. If you put Jesus in the hand of man, they will not make Jesus come back to Jesus' status again. You know? That betrayer that Judas betrayed him, they will betray him so, so much so that he will not be able to change back to Jesus as the son of God. You know, man can be that serious. They will just make sure that they do something stupid. How can you entrust yourself to man? People that you give everything. You know, angels didn't have everything. Angels don't even have a will like you do. They don't have, they cannot exercise their will like you do. And he gave you all of that. And then some of us are living as if we are less than the least demon. But this morning, receive healing in Jesus' name. Say with me, say, I'm, I have dignity. God has redeemed me to a place of dignity in the name of Jesus. What is dignity? Dignity is holding in high esteem. Holding in high esteem. It is the esteem and value you place on yourself. In Romans chapter 12 verse 3, the Bible says, Let no man think highly of himself than he ought to think. Now, what some people have thought about that means that let no man think high of himself. You don't have to think high of yourself. You are already high. The Bible says, <laughs> Ephesians 1, 6, I believe Ephesians 2, 8, 2, it says you have been raised together with Jesus and you have been seated in where? Heavenly places. Far <laughs> is enough to say you have been placed above principality. But the Bible says far. To show you how high you are. 
So what Paul was saying in Romans 12 was talking about offices. When God placed people in office, stay in your lane. But he wasn't saying don't think highly of yourself. He wasn't th saying don't think of yourself like the word of God calls you. You can think of yourself the way God portrays you and you are not, you are not proud. In fact, let me tell you the truth. Pride, pride is when you don't accept what God tells you you are. That's pride. That's right. If God says you are above and not beneath and you say you are beneath, you are proud. Because you believe you know more than God. If God says this is who you are and you say that's not who you are, that's pride. Of course, there's, a, there's the part where God gives you good things and you want to go for small things. There's another part where what God did not give you, you want to take it. For example, God does not want you to be worshipped. He doesn't want people to give you worship. He doesn't want that. So to take that is also pride. So pride is not just one item that, oh, it is the person that is always doing their shoulder like this and have a big shoulder pad. You know, some people, this is the way they work. And it's not because of exercise and gymming things and all that kind of thing. It's just that they are just so full of themselves. <laughs> and they just walk like that and talk like that too. They just talk like that, talk to everybody in every... That's nonsense. That's pride. But God is saying to you and me this morning, you have dignity. I have already given it to you. And it is the esteem, the way you look at yourself. You see, many people, it is lack of right esteem that they have. There are people that have low self-esteem. It's bad. You look down on yourself. I'm not enough. I can't do it. People like me don't do it. I cannot talk. I cannot this. I cannot that. So what's the need for grace of God then? then why did Jesus come? If all that you all that you happen to you is all that you can, so what does Philippians 4:13 mean then? When it says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, I may be shy, I may be timid, but I am enough and I can do what God has called me to do. If God called you to speak, you can speak. Even if you were not born to speak. Some of us were not born like that. I was still telling myself recently. I said, <laughs> who would have thought? And I'm still shy. It's not that now that I'm, you know, I now speak, speak, speak. I'm no much. I'm still shy. In fact, I diagnosed myself recently. And I said the reason why I don't do so many social things is because I'm shy. I, I rather not go to social events. It's not that I don't like people. I like people. I mean, if you know me, you know I, I, I like people to a fault. But I rather stay on my own. I rather, if I come into this room, it's not humility. Sometimes people say, ah, You're very, very humble. <laughs> so I say, Well, God is helping us. <laughs> but some of these things I say, It's not humility. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very shy. You know, sometimes I travel to Nigeria and they want to take me to one very far place in the floor. I say, Why? I say, Why? I say, I won't be able to sing. I won't be able to dance. I won't be able to do the way I want to do because, you know, in some of those places, everybody will sit like only unto the Lord. <laughs> And the meal now come. I'm like, they will say, shout hallelujah. We shout. Don't worry. Where did they bring this one? So when I when they are taking me, I said, no, 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 I don't. See, I, I just like it, the kind of person. It's not, it's not. I'm just shy. I, I can't stand it. Some people can take care of that, but I can't. So, but if I hold this mic, sometimes something will enter me, so to say. Even some days, I when I hold this mic, some days, when I hold this mic like this, I still feel a little that shyness small. My hand will not shake like those days you should shake. But it, it, it will be small there. But I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can stand before any crowd and talk about Jesus. I can speak to anybody and tell them about what the word of God says. Why? Because he called me to do it. And if he has called me to do it, I'm enough. I look, like, I look at myself the way he looks at me. I call myself what he calls me. If he calls me a man of God, that's who I am. If he calls me a father, that's who I am. My father might not have failed. I might not have seen a good picture of it. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Some of us have broken records that we didn't see anybody do for us. We were not in a good, we didn't come out from a good home. We didn't, maybe we came out from a broken home. But because I came out from a broken home does not mean I need to operate a broken home. What he calls me is more important than what I went through. I believe what he calls me. 
I believe what he calls me. So I hold myself in that esteem. Some people say, he's proud. It's okay. Leave them alone. Oh. Leave them alone to say that. Hold yourself in that high esteem of what God called you. God calls you a beautiful woman. Hold yourself like that. Don't let one brother come and tell you, babe, I think you are beautiful, but excuse me, excuse me. Thank you. Keep your butt. I got the verdict. Because some people feel like they need to give you something you didn't know. Don't tell me what. I already know what he says concerning me. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My, your legs are not good enough. Who, who define good enough? What's the standard of a good enough leg? Your legs are not straight. Your legs are not fat, long enough. And stuff like that. Excuse me. I am the definition of the excellency of God for my life. How will you tell me I'm not beautiful? As compared to what? Uh, excuse me, as compared to what? Because I, I am the only one of my kind. When God finished making me, he broke the mold. The, you can't go back to the factory and find the mold. The way, when he made me, he destroyed the mold. I am one of a kind. Oh, glory to God. I may not have six pack. I may have one pack or amusement pack. My pack is the pack that I need to have. Can somebody say amen? Tall, dark, and handsome. Tall, dark, and handsome. Tall, dark, and handsome. I don't know who brought those things. <laughs> may, God, may God have mercy on that person. Because they just, they just put people in bondage. Tall, dark, and handsome. I want, my, I want my children to be beautiful. I want my sons to be fine. Let me tell you, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> they will pick the bad traits that both of you have. And when you see the baby like you say, ah, what have we done? <laughs> the other day, somebody was, <laughs> he saw me. And he said, thank you very much for giving us beautiful baby. I look at him and say, wicked man, you want to put me in trouble? Who gave you wicked baby? Good baby. Is it not God that makes them? He said, I give you good babies. Ah, let them be fine like that too. <laughs> Before you go and talk and then undo the work. Huh? Well, let me tell you, let nobody tell you who you are. The word of God is your definition. It, the Bible even calls the word of God mirror. You know why? So that you go there. What you see there, believe it. Okay? I don't need to try to go and tell me, I say, Pastor, I don't like your hairstyle. You know, one time I used to cut my hair, I was thinking about it this morning. I will cut my hair and sometimes I will cut it on Sunday morning. And I will know I have patch here. Somewhere in my head. So when I, when I stand there like this, something will not tell me that, ah, that patch, that patch. I say, forget it. Is this my patch? <laughs> because if I don't talk to that voice quickly, I will be under pressure that they are seeing the patch. Eh, and so what? Who cares? It's my patch. And the person that I also may be concerned, she knows how I got to the patch. And she's fine with the patch. Are you not fine with the patch? Glory to God. <laughs> Because I and the reason I stopped cutting my hair those days was I just didn't like the waste of time. Sometimes we'll go to Baba's shop. The guy will start, hey my bro, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> then the guy starts. Then we are still there one hour, 30 minutes later. I'm like, wait, what is that? What is that? Until I found some brothers. These brothers are fast. They just do it sharp, sharp. And then they get the haircut. What am I saying to you this morning? When it comes to dignity, dignity is the esteem and the value you place of yourself. I was talking about the fact that some people have low self-esteem. Some other people also have unnecessary high self-esteem, so to say. There's this, which is a complex. There's inferiority complex. There's also superiority complex. You just feel you are better than everybody. Now, yes, there's a dimension from God that you have your gift in. But every ass, everyone has his own proper gift of God. If you value yourself well, you will not devalue other people. It is little people that make people little. When you, when you have to make people little, you have to talk to them anyhow. You have to talk to them sharply. You have to talk as if no. You say, I just say my mind. Which kind? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. As we don't just see our mind because there are some stupid things that come to your mind that you also don't tell yourself. Like I tell people, when you, say, you know, I just like to be real. I say, you are not as real as you claim you are. When you are pressed, are you real and just excuse yourself wherever you are sitting down? You don't. You, because if you are very, very, very real, you will do anything, anyhow, and anytime. 
But when you are praised, you don't just get real. Some of us will even get to the bathrooms and we will not see some uh, toiletry supplies and you will not be able to. You will be like, no, no. And I hope you are like that. <laughs> Especially, <laughs> I know sometimes God have mercy on me. Especially some of us, the brothers. Amen to Jesus. Amen to Jesus. Sometimes, some of us brothers, the way we use bathroom, I have been sent to tell you, you can do better. Can somebody say amen? amen. The toilet seats, okay? Some people also use it. So if you do number one, let number one not be seen again. It's not like we're seeing number one here. Number one here. <laughs> you know? They taught me to. I didn't know because I would just do number one. And you, if you come into the bathroom, you just say number one there, number one there, <laughs> everywhere. It's part of dignity. Oh. It's part of dignity. Just like it is also part of dignity that you dress well. Can I say? Can I say that? It's part of dignity that you smell well. Can I say that? Can somebody say amen to that? Can I tell some of our brothers that sometimes there's B-O. Boo, boo, boo. Boo, boo. Do you know what B-O is? You know what B-O is? We don't need it. Can somebody say amen? Especially we colored people. I don't know. I, do we sweat more than some people that are not like our type? Because I, I think I've seen a lot of more B-O's in our kind of world. Amen to Jesus. You know, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, ah, you are shattering tables now. There's no more table again. <laughs> because, ah, that emo. Let me, let me say this. There are some things that are not demonic. Lady, can I ask you? You know, some people will say, in that church, we'll just talk to the lady. They will not. <laughs> Something goes ahead of you, sir. There is something that proceeded from the mouth of the king that is not good. Emo, emo, mouth odor, mouth odor. We are going to start fasting now. We are going to start fasting. Please, brush more than once. Can somebody say amen? I remember several years ago, I think my mouth was still. I was telling somebody, one of my friends, my mouth was still. I mean, she's of another faith. And she said to me, she said, ah, that's a very good thing. That, that bad odor is very good for the, you know, heavenly realm. I said, no. Ah, I don't like the heaven that they like bad odor. <laughs> no. If God is even holy, how will he like bad odor? Ah, come on. So please, in the days of fasting, part of dignity is that. I'm telling you that you are a king and you should live like a king every time. You dress like a king. You walk like a king. You talk like... There are things kings don't talk about. There are behaviors. Kings do... There are some things kings don't do. Sometimes when I see some of us, the way we behave, I'm like, ah, ah, Abba. For the precious blood of Jesus, the blood, this is beneath the blood. This is beneath the blood. The way we talk. Sometimes the way we dress. I know that America is a casual place of dressing, but you can be casual and still neat. You can be casual and still classy. Can somebody say amen? You know, we have brothers. You know, press your pants. You know, high on your pants. You know, when I, when I grew up, we used to take pride in the fact that if we wear our shirts, you, you know, the ghettos, it can cut your hand. God, the feel good about it you know feel good about the fact that you shine your shoe i know i went to a semi-military school so maybe they gave me that but it is dignity that's how kings behave have you have you gone to a palace before or watch a, 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 a royal movie have you seen the opulence have you seen the beauty have you seen the splendor have you seen how things are neatly arranged have you seen how things are done in order that's how your life should look like and I'm challenging you and saying that this dignity that I'm telling you about, it involves that too. It's not just dignity, you know, esoterically and thinking that what God has made me in the spirit. 
these people that are here, they want to see it in the physical. You know, God was telling some, um, some, uh, Samuel, when Samuel went to meet David, he said, I don't look at the outward. I look at inside, right? But he said, man looks at the outward. Can somebody say amen? Some of my people that are not yet married, man looks at the outward. Though. Say, eh, it's not what you see. Ah, <laughs> what I'm seeing is not making me see what I should do. <laughs> what I'm seeing now is confusing my eyes. I can't see what is inside. I can't see the beauty. I know that, you know, it's a meek and honor name. You know, what's that word Peter said now? Meek. Eh? Okay, ornament. <laughs> a meek spirit. Yeah, I know. I know about that. But you see, sometimes we can't see that meek spirit. We can just see the way you combine colors. There's no need to dress in rainbow. You know? <laughs> All colors of Roy G. Beef, beef, beef. <laughs> Combined in one swipe. Please, there's another day we can use those colors. Let's just use one or two in one day and then move on. It's called dignity. It's called dignity. Colors of nature. <laughs> Please yourself with IRS. Treat yourself well. Smell good. Smell good. Get good cologne. Amen. Use deodorant. Amen. I remember one day, one sister in this church, I passed by her, but did I shake her? She was like, you smell good. And you're always smelling good. I said, wow, okay. <laughs> and it, you know, that, let me tell you the truth. Sometimes when I s s smell that things are not, I have a cologne in the, in the office. I will, because I will not let the gift of God be lightly taken. Amen. <laughs> but I'm saying to you this morning, you need to carry yourself with dignity. And dignity does not have to be expensive. Oh. You don't have to have all the... You know. In fact, sometimes, you will find people that have money and you almost say money miss road. Because you don't see any level of dignity. Even their car. Let me go there, right? Some of our cars, we use it like... Why, why can you drive in that kind of car? Let me tell you. Some people don't know that even God likes physical order. God likes physical order. Sometimes God can come into you are praising God so much. The presence should have come in, but there's something pushing you back. See everything all over. Me. If you enter some cars, the guy can dress up again. He's wearing clothes now, but he can wear a full dressing inside a car, all over, littered all over the place. Eh, well, it's the guys that like their cars to be this way. Everybody likes order. Can somebody say amen? It don't, and it doesn't cost a lot. Maybe a car membership. Vacuum once in a while. Or pick up after you. You know. I, one of the places I went to minister recently. They were telling me, say, our daddy, you can't eat in his car. I said, hey, that's it now. I need to bring that to Chicago. Because I, I'm, lit, I'm half there. My children will be like, daddy doesn't... I don't be we, we have to clean our space must look godly it must have dignity and that's why when you come to church I, i'm confused i'm disappointed i'm maroon flabbergasted you eat and you drop it it's not dignifying people do that a lot in fact the one that i cannot understand for the life of me you know you can't drink that drink you now open it and sip ah where I come from, we finish it all. <laughs> if you can't start, if you can't finish, don't start. What's that? Dignity. Dignity. I, I hold myself with respect. With high esteem. That's how dignity works. So dignity is the value you place on yourself and the esteem you place on yourself. What is dignity? It is self-worth that shows up in self-talk and self-respect. Dignity is self-worth that shows up in self-talk and self-respect. Do you know the people that, the persons that have abused some people the most is not others, it's themselves. You make a mistake, you say, stupid me. 
your self talk is thinking. You you talk down yourself. Coconut head, coconut head. People, you will be eating themselves like that though. So when you do that to yourself, you think the devil will now pamper you? Say, ah, he has already beaten himself. Let's leave him alone. No, he doesn't take he doesn't take himself seriously. He doesn't even know his worth. He costs himself anything. He takes himself anywhere. Do you know that it is sometimes self disrespect that makes even people to sin? If God says don't, I respect the word. I respect myself, not to go there. Self respect, self talk, the kind of things you say to yourself. If you get better in what you say to yourself, I'm I'm too sure you get better in what you tell other people. The reason some people talk anyhow to people is that even their own personal talk is ugly. And I'm saying this morning, if Jesus has made you a king in creation, if he has made you a king in redemption, why are you talking like a pauper? Why are you talking like that? We the masses, we, you know, you just say anything. You include yourself in conversation that does not include you at all. And all these church people, they say Christianity. It's better we say that so-called Christianity and have self-respect. I just uh, you, you are not just real, you don't face reality. But my reality is the word of God. The, when the word of God says it, I believe it. If it says I am above only, I believe it and I say it. I don't believe it and just keep it in my heart. There needs to be a, a way I translate what I believe into what I say. Self-talk. Self-respect. I respect myself. I take myself seriously. I take my destiny seriously. I am not a joker around my own life. I don't have two lives. I'm not going to finish this one. Then I say, oh, that was a very good rehearsal. Now go and do the real thing. When you finish this one, you have finished it. I take myself serious. I take my destiny serious. I take my assignment serious. I take what God has told me to do serious. You know, sometimes the reason why I stay awake in the... I can't, I can't, I can't. This thing I'm preaching now. How many minutes will it take me to put all this in there? I will now be reading so many things. I'll be pouring too many. I, this morning, I have listened to a message. I was searching. I have written what most of this is that I'm saying now. But I was searching because I take it seriously. Some of you, you don't take yourself serious. Why, why do you think God or the devil will take you seriously? No self respect. You go anywhere. When you finish from here today, you wouldn't even have any value for your time. You know, the people that disvalue their time the most are people personally. You don't have value for your time. If I ask you what you did after Sunday service now, you won't be able to tell me. We just, I just did one or two things. One or two things. And then the day went. And then you have a pile of real things you are supposed to do. But because you don't respect yourself. You don't respect yourself. I'm saying this morning that if you are a king, you need to have self-respect. Respect yourself. And let me tell you this. Respect is what you first give yourself before any other person gives you. If you don't give yourself, it doesn't matter who has given you, you are still not respected. And so many people say, somebody disrespected. People cannot disrespect you if you have respected yourself and you don't accept that disrespect. They can just give their opinion. But if you have respected yourself and hold yourself to the esteem that God held you to, you just know that that's their opinion and that their opinion does not count. For example, somebody can come to you and say, stupid boy, see your head. If I have respected myself, I know what the word of God says. I know the word of God says I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I can just smile. Because sometimes, the best answer to give some people that are ignorant and foolish is not to engage them in a conversation. Or down and say, eh, me, you say I'm stupid. You, you are stupid. Stu 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 <laughs> he has, he's now right. Because <laughs> what, he, <laughs> what he just did now just shows that he's right. Self-worth that shows up in self-talk and self-respect. I like what Paul said in Romans chapter 11 and verse 13. <laughs> Paul said, I magnify my office. <laughs> can, you, can, you, can you imagine that? He said, I magnify my office. He said, for I speak to Gentiles in as much as I speak, I am a, in as much as I am an apostle to Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. I magnify my ministry. It may be small, but I magnify it. It may be small, but I appreciate it and I, and I don't belittle it. I don't take it with levity. There are some people, God will give you one verse of a song. You say, ah, <laughs> I'll now go and do that one. 
And there is from my spirit to my even to see to didn't do from my spirit to myself. No, it didn't start from there. If the first song, if all I say is Jesus, Jesus, that's more than enough. No big deal to it. But because he, he still wanted that gift, it became big. It became big. It became big. So many people are waiting to have epic things. Epic. I want to get that song that will just shake the internet. <laughs> you won't get it. You won't. You will first get do strange things. Or what was that song? That was? <laughs> you will first get those kind of songs that you're like, what's that now? <laughs> and you will believe it. You will celebrate. Sometimes when I see some of my friends, they will come and meet me. They will say, I- I've written five books. So, uh, I'm like, this guy is confident and I like it. Because when I flip through the book sometimes, I'm like, ah, bro, this is still one book. <laughs> it's five book. It's one book. But I'm glad. I'm, 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 I'm telling you, I prefer that guy who turned one book to five books. <laughs> to the boy, to the guy that didn't turn it to anything. Magnify your office. If God gives you a sentence, magnify it. Magnif- make a big deal of it. Celebrate God like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> Me? One sentence? Kai. Hallelujah. Great, blah, blah. Just be saying that one sentence forever. Just trademark it if you can. Magnify your office. Magnify your office. You can sing one part. Magnify your office. You can do one small thing and you don't think it's a big deal. Magnify that office. That is what dignity is all about. That is what dignity is all about. Let me share with you some things that may help you to practice dignity this week, this month, especially in 2025. I want you and I to live our royal status. When you see a king, a prince, you should be able to see royalty on them. And one of the ways you can see that royalty is the dignity to which they, they move around life. Having an above mentality. Above all mentality that God has set me on high, that God has seated me with Christ in heavenly places. I'm a, not a non-entity. No, I'm not a non-entity. I matter to God. I matter to this generation. You know, talk like that. I matter. I, I have something I'm bringing on the table. You know, there's this conversation I think was going on on social media. The other. They'll be asking some people, what do you bring to the table? And they'll be saying all kinds of stuff. You are the table. I like that. Yeah. I, I bring something to the table. I bring something to the table because redemption has put a lot in me. They, I bring a lot to the table. When I'm not there, they will miss me. Bring something to the table. How can you practice dignity this week and going forward? Accept and behave your dignifying status as re- re- revealed in scriptures. Accept and behave your dignifying status. As revealing to you. Accept what I'm telling you this morning. Don't explain it away. Don't say, no, you are not facing reality. I'm facing reality. Listen to it. Accept it. Some people don't like to accept good things about themselves. If they tell you that you are looking nice, they will not explain it. Why are you explaining it? Just say thank you. Accept it. Accept it. You know, it's one of the things that I, as an African boy, had to learn. Because the way we grew up, you know, it's almost like, don't, don't let their head swell. Oh. If their head swell, they let the head swell. In fact, the head does not need to swell. Because I've been I can't get higher than where they have placed me. I'm sitting at the You know when people say, the sky is the limit. Which sky? When I became born again, I was taken far above. Principally, seated with Christ in heavenly places. Far above. There's sky. Sky. Atmospheric sky. That uh, people are doing space to another thing to pass this. I'm far above that. Accept it. Accept who God calls you. If God says you are the head, I accept it. I accept it. And I will say it. I will mention it. Even when I don't have it. I don't have money in my pocket. God says, I am blessed to be a blessing. I, I, will, I, will, I will lend to many nations. I will say it. Not when I have the money. Even when I don't have the money, I will say it. I will say it. Accept it and I will behave it. I will behave it. If I cannot afford something now, I will not make permanent statements. 
People like us cannot afford it. What do you mean by that? I can't just get it now. I cannot buy it yet. I cannot buy it now. Your child tells you something like, Daddy, can we get a Tesla? I say, why not? If not, when are we getting it? Soon. Amen to Jesus. Soon can be five years time. Soon can be ten years time. But we are getting it. Accept the dignity that God has put in you. If you are hearing me this morning, like Pastor was saying, talking yesterday, that some of us are, many of us are immigrants. There is a mentality that some of us, we brought our village to where we are living. We are still living like our village. Some people, you know that we are still converting money into the currency we left. Say, ah, it's expensive. It, by, by what standards? Huh? <laughs> eh? Ah, that's in somebody's salary. Oh. Somebody's annual salary. Eh? Yeah, we know. <laughs> we know. We know. We know. But you are not in that place. You are here now. Don't be living in Canaan as if you are still in Egypt. That's the problem many people have. They live with Egypt's mindset in Canaan. When you are in Canaan, accept the abundance of Canaan. When you are in Canaan, ask God and de demand that Canaan will supply his abundance. We prayed the prayer yesterday. Let this land yield that glory to me. Why will I be, when they talk about business, it's only when I do business with Africa. Why, why can't I do business here? Is there a problem doing business here? Why can't I have an office in downtown Chicago? Can somebody hear me? What, 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 about, what about having an office in downtown Chicago in one of those high-rises buildings? Can somebody say amen? You know, several years ago, not too long ago, I saw, I saw, I, let me say it so that you would remember when I said, when you, you see it, we had an office, church, it was an high rise. It's like 10, 12 story building. Why not if not? You are not saying amen like you believe it. Accept and behave it. Behave it. Some of the things I do here, is, many of them have not happened. And I'm not lying to myself because some people say, you are, you are not real. You are being hypocritical. No, 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 no. The word of God says it. It's my reality. The word says I'm, I'm on top. The word says I'm blessed and I'm not stressed. So I live, I behave that. I behave that. The Bible speaking in Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. 17 and 18. It was about the prodigal son that left the house. This boy had dignity. And he brought himself to a low place. But I like what the Bible says in that verse. Six, uh, 17. He said, but when he came to himself. I am praying for a prayer. I am praying a prayer of you will come to yourself. You will come to your dignified self. You will come to the status God has put you. You will see yourself the way God sees you. In the name of Jesus. Remember that the angels were asking themselves and we have dropped this conversation. What is man? This guy has dignity. Come to that reality. It doesn't matter what is happening now. It doesn't matter the kind of car you're driving now. That car may look like this doesn't have any... The, the D and I in your dignity has, is not there again. <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. Still carry yourself with dignity. Still speak like the word of God. Behave like it. Behave like you are for the top. Don't excuse yourself from anything the word of God says. How do you practice dignity? Do not accept mediocrity. Even in the name of humility. Do not accept mediocrity. Even in the name of humility. Is it not just to eat? Then you eat anything. And anyhow. Presentation is part of the food. I, I, I dignify myself. I'm not going to bring myself low to that. It's not pride. It's just that a king will not do that. It's not pride, but a prince will not do that. It's what I want that I want. And I'm not going to settle for less. Don't accept mediocrity. Some of you have had, want to accept mediocrity in relationship. Is it, not, is it not just to marry? It's not just to marry. It's to marry according to the will of God. I like this scripture in Acts chapter 13, 36. The Bible says, and David served God in his own generation according to the will of God. Is it not just to, just to wear clothes? Yes, it is, but it must dignify God. I must dress like somebody that was bought with the blood. If I will wear clothes, let me wear clothes. 
Which one is I'm wearing clothes and it looks like I'm naked? It's not dignifying. Kings don't do that. Queens don't. Have you seen the way the queens dress? You say, it makes me look trendy. When trendy now is I'm naked. What's trendy about being naked? Oh, it just shows my figure. You see your figure by yourself now. Why do you need to show anybody that is not necessary? You know, ah, Pastor, he's more confident. You, you know, you, you're speaking like old school. No, 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 no. I'm speaking like royal school. I'm speaking like dignified school. I'm speaking the dignity of God. Have dignity for yourself. What God wants to keep uh, hidden, there's no need to bring it to the open. Amen? Amen. Yeah. It's dignity. Dignify yourself. Don't chip in yourself. Don't accept mediocrity. Don't accept mediocrity in your job. Let me say, for example, this morning we made typos in the in our this day, and I, I felt very bad. I, I'm going to. I know. I know who to blame, and I won't tell you who to blame. <laughs> Some people know who to blame. The person to blame is only the mic. Amen to Jesus. But we're not just going to look away and look by. No. 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 I mean, some people that have related with me, sometimes I'll be collecting, correcting grammar. You don't write like that. Some people say, ah, some people are laughing there. <laughs> I'll be saying, why are you writing everything in lowercase? There's no point to you. What was all that? And some people say, is it not, don't you understand? I do understand, but what is right is right. What is proper is proper. Let us live life in a very orderly way so that we are not cheapening our lives. We don't live with mediocrity. I feel like sometimes many people they will leave the country where they were living. They could have risen far in that country but when they come here in the name of survival they will get into something and they will remain in that survival mode till they die. Every now and then it aches my heart when I look at immigrant communities and I'm like what about the businesses? Especially sometimes the African immigrant community. I'm asking myself, what about the businesses? Did you, have you noticed that some people, it's only business they are doing here. They won't even learn English. Go to Chinatown. You will meet people, they can't speak English. No, it's not that they can't speak English. Well. They cannot speak English. Zero English. But they will buy you if, they, if you are for sale. Why? They don't think small. They think big. They don't want to do mediocre things. They can start small, but they don't remain small. Hear me? Starting small is not bad. Remaining small is evil. If you're a king, you cannot stay there. You cannot remain there. What? Then why are we doing 10 hours prayer now? If we're going to just continue life the way we've been doing it, then why are we wasting? What, what is that 10 hours energy for? What is it for? Don't do mediocre job. And some of us, we have a job. Our boss cannot promote us. Even me, as your pastor, I can't employ you. I'm telling you the truth. Why? You are going to do a shabby job. We give you a contract, and we have to give another person after we have given you. We won't give you the second time. You are not going to settle for mediocrity. You should review your own thing, your own work, and make sure your standard of excellence is always increasing. Have a feedback mechanism system on yourself. Yesterday, my son saw me. I was listening to my message. And he said, ah, you listen to your message? I said, yeah. I said, I had to train myself. To. It's very hard, though. If you speak, if you sing, if you do anything, it's very hard to listen to yourself. Oh. Very hard. But do I listen to my... Oh, yes, I do. So that I can see where I quoted the scripture wrongly. So that I can see where I call First Timothy instead of Second Timothy. So that I can see where you know sometimes I'm preaching like this, and I will change my tense of uh, my grammar tense, and I will be using past tense in place of present tense, and I will not know, and I'll be singing with all boldness, with a very loud voice. I say, what, what, what's, 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 what's all this one? Eh? What's this? And you see, some nobody is going to tell you that one. No? Is it tribe that will now come and tell me? I say, Pastor. <laughs> If, if, we, if I will come and meet me, say that message was very powerful. You know, people do that to me. Sometimes when people come and meet me and say, the message really blessed me. I, I'm tempted to say, What blessed you? Because the guy will be like, <laughs> the way you were saying that word, that word is not pronounced like that. Eh? The way you were just pronouncing that word like that. Hmm? 
Leicester. Leicester. In one city in England. It's Leicester, right? Okay. So they will hear you say, you just, they will don't be sla- laughing. You say, ah, today I was very funny. <laughs> you won't know that you are indeed very, they are laughing at you. You are the joker. <laughs> but don't accept mediocrity. This is not the best version of you. There are some of you, I push you, I say, don't you need to do that. Because this is not the best version of you. You can do better than that. You can sing better. You can comport yourself better. You can preach better. You can do anything that God has called you to do better. And one of the ways to avoid mediocrity is this. Never have an arrival mentality. When I used to be in the tech, and some of our tech people here may know that, that one of the things that happens, that especially software you know, industry, they, they, there is a particular part of that software they will first release. They call it the beta version. Do you know that many of the software many of you use today, they are still in the beta version? I believe everybody needs to be permanently in the beta version. Where, don't feel like, I, this is the best. I have released my final edition. No, you are not, this is not final edition of Pastor E. Come and listen to me in 2025. You are going to see raw fire. You are going to see revelation. Because I'm going deep. I'm digging deep. I'm not going to go and see that. Eh? Okay, what, best, what did I preach last year, January? Okay, okay. I'll call it something else. I said dignity, okay. Now we say respect. Honor and respect. No, no. No, no, no mediocrity. I'm not going to settle for small things. Some people, the, the reason why they are clapping is because you are comparing yourself with the bottom. Average is not a good thing because average is the top of the bottom. It is the bottom. It's just that it's a different bottom. The top is the top. And that's where you belong. And that's where you are going in 2025. That's where you will remain in 2025. If you believe you say, believe in amen. Let me read this scripture and maybe another one and then you'll be on your way. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. 5 to 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Verse 5 to 7. The Bible said, There is an evil I have seen on the uh, under the sun. It is an error. I have seen evil under the sun, and it is an error. It says the error is produced is is proceeding from the ruler, is proceeding from the king. They don't know that they are in error. Why? Look at verse six. It says, "Folly is set in great in great dignity, while the rich sit in lowly palace or place." He says, I have seen servants on all seas while princes walk on the ground like servants. Is that not the reality of life? Two people, people that have been made king twice in creation, in redemption. And the people that are kings only in creation, they are riding upon horses. But people that are doubly kings, they are walking on foot. And they will say something, this earth is not my home. I'm just passing through. But I want to pass through with gallantly. I want to pass through on a donkey. I want to pass through in color. I want to pass through and this one we know I came. I don't just want to pass through and go like a fibbit here. No. I want it that many years after I've lived, they will still refer to me. I read somebody's quote this morning. I'm sure that guy died in the 1500s. And I'm still reading it in 2024. That's how I want to live. But if you permit it as a ruler, if you allow it, the default is mediocrity. The default is nonsense. The default is not good. So this morning, I'm challenging the rulers. Don't accept mediocrity. How do I practice dignity? Accept and behave your dignifying status. Do not accept mediocrity. How do I practice dignity? Press. Push. Yearn for more. Yearn for more. Yearn for more. Pastor E, when are you going to be satisfied? This one you're always talking about. Is it that just like, no, it's not. I don't believe this is anything. No. I'm not, and, I, and I'm not trying to be ungrateful. But sir, we have not started. I don't. How can this be started? That would be a shame on redemption and many of the investments of God over my life. I can, even if it is biological family tree alone, this is not good enough. Biological. What of spiritual? I have sat in the front row of many, many great men of God. Many. 
many. You think it should be for nothing? No, it should be for something. It should be for something. So I'm yearning for more. In 2025, that's why I said we pray. Oh. If you don't like it, God will help you. But we will pray. We want more. We want more. This can't be everything. Now, nah, I'm not in America. I, you have a blue passport. So, and so what? There are people that have green passport or they don't even have passport. They can't spell passport. But uh, they have something <laughs> that you don't have. You know, sometimes I, I was watching a, a, a music event this weekend. You know, this 2025, I didn't want us to do Taylor. I felt it's too expensive. Because Taylor is expensive. I'm telling you. It's expensive on everything. Financially and bodily. And, but I saw that program. I said, ah! I said, <laughs> well, even before that time, God told me, he said, look, I'm the one that pays for what I order. I'm the one. I'm the one. So you want to cut, you want to, you know, people tell, tell, to say those things. Cut your coat according to your size. I believe in contentment. But I also believe that if you always move in the line of comfort, you will be contented on nothing, on nonsense. Yearn for more. If you are hearing me, don't tell yourself you are too old. You can still go to school. If you are hearing me, don't tell yourself you can't write that book. You can still write the book. Did you know that some of the names and businesses you heard today, people did it in their 60s? When did Mandela become president of, of South Africa? How many people can remember any other president in South Africa? Can you? And he did, I think he did only one term. Did he do more than one term? It was one term. And he did it as a, an old man. It's not too late, my brother. It's not too late, my sister. Yearn for more. As a king that God has made you, yearn for more. Some of you, the plans you have for 2025 is too small. The reason why you are not able to do it is that God feels that that's too little for him to answer. How will he look like God in that kind of plan? That plan is too small. It's too small. Make it bigger. Ten times it. <laughs> that's when God would say, hey, now we're talking. I can help you now. Ah, pastor, I should make it ten times. Of course, make it ten times. Push, press in the place of prayer, press in the place of perspiring and, and reading. There is a generation that is rising now, very lazy, very, very lazy. Small thing, small, small discomfort. Ah, oh, it's too hard. <laughs> when did you hear that it was soft before? Hey, but, but I'm favored, I, I have redemption. Hey, favor did not mean that there will be no labor. Did you not read about the apostle of grace, the apostle of favor? First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God. You think that's full stop because that's the way some people read it. I am what I am by the grace of God. Full stop. No. He now said, grace made me to labor. Because some people will say, ah, I, I will not labor. I will just have favor. It sounds like a rhyme, but it's not reality. You will labor. <laughs> you will work. You will work. Jesus worked. Jesus is working. So where will you find your own now? You will perspire. You will sweat. They will say, ah, ah, you are getting too hard on yourself. Be hard on yourself because nobody is going to make it out of this world alive. We are all going to die eventually. So why are you now doing as if you do? You never die. You will die now. So let's use this thing so that when we finish, we will have finished. Because from, there are many people when they ended, they didn't finish. They ended before they finished. Why? They didn't stretch themselves. They didn't press. Hear me and speak to your 2025. Say, I'm coming in 2025. I will not be lazy in 2025. I will not be slothful in 2025. I will not be sloppy in 2025. I will not be slabby in 2025. I will push. I will press. In the name of Jesus. So when I say press, Make investment into your future. Make investment in the books you read. Some of us, the only book we read is social media. No, make investment. Some people, the only book you read is the book they've assigned to you to read in school. That's not enough investment. You need more. Some of you don't know that, oh, I'm studying to get a medical degree. You may not work with a medical degree. You may need to know how to do management. 
Yeah. Why, why, why are you not going to read a book on management? Why are you not going to read a book on, on, on business? Why? Why? You want to do the next big thing and you have no knowledge at all. No investment. There are many of you looking at 2025 and you have seen so many big, big, big words. But no big, big, big plans. No big, big, big preparation. It is preparation that precipitates manifestation. We are saying next year is going to be a year of unusual manifestation. Let me tell you, unusual manifestation is a function of unusual preparation. Jotham, Jotham became great because he prepared his way before the Lord. Prepared his way. I'm going to end here. Last thing I will say is when it comes to practicing dignity, you press, you push, you yearn for more, then you honor others. You dignify others. You don't belittle people. There is no way you will live a honorable life if you don't know how to extend honor to people. Most people will say, people are disrespectful to me. People don't greet me. They don't talk to me well. Excuse me, sir. They are responding to you. It's the way you are talking to them. You are rash. You are harsh. You speak your mind. You speak what you want to say. I'm a, I'm a straight shooter. I'm a bad shooter. This morning I'm speaking to you. These things that I've told you, it can work in your marriage. It can work in your careers. It can work even in the things you do in church. Do you know you can do your job in this church with dignity? With excellence. If our God asks an excellent name, why do you do a shabby job at church? Because it's, it's church, right? So once they say it's not for, they don't, they don't pay me. It's volunteer. You think you do it anyhow. Let me tell you the truth. The one you should do like they want to kill you is the one they don't pay you. Because when human beings don't pay you, God will pay you. God will pay you. Many of us, what we do, we are not doing because of money. Ah, if it's money, I will hold Mike now. There's, I have a degree that will give me better money than Mike. Quiet money. And it's a lot because I know that thing. I know, I know if I was one of the top people in my class. He would give me more money. But this one gives me more fulfillment. More fulfillment. I meet people and they tell me, Pastor, this happened to me. I'm, I'm blessed. That's, that's, that's why I was born. I'm saying to you this morning, honor others. The words you speak to people, including people that are smaller than you, your children. If you're an African parent here, hear me. Your children are complete human beings. Can somebody say amen? amen. Have you ever seen population census and you have fractions? <laughs> there, are <laughs> there are 8 billion people, 1 million and 2 and a half. Every human being is complete. They may not be able to talk, but they are complete. Don't abuse them in the name of they are my children. You are my child. And so what? My children. <laughs> Let's rise to our feet this morning. Let's rise to our feet. I want you to hold the hands of somebody. I know I've stretched your time, but when you pray 10 hours, what do you expect? <laughs> I will have to use extra. Don't worry. I'm dignifying your time in Jesus' name. The person you are holding, tell them, say, there's dignity on you. There's glory, there is honor over your life. I know in the days to come, many other people will see what I see today. That you have been crowned with glory and with honor. Everything that looks like shame, disrespect, dishonor, functional in your life today. By holding your hands, I agree with you. They are cancelled. They are cancelled. They are deactivated. They have no power over you. You live in full dignity to the glory of God. If you believe in, say, believe in, amen.